Can you help me, John? Yeah, you unmuted. You can go ahead, John. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I am starting with you. I know you have a little tight on schedule, so I said well, let's start with you. Yeah. So can you hear me? Uh, I can. We can yeah. hear you. I can hear you. Okay. So basically, uh, my catering career started from being. Uh, Waiting, uh, wedding waiter. Uh, then I decided uh, to do hotel management. I did my hotel management from Sophia Politic in Mumbai. Uh, worked on all the areas like from rigs, both offshore on onshore, supply vessels, uh, cargo vessels, and uh, then I joined. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, it's uh, I, I went into ship channeling. Besides working uh, in uh, hotels like Taj, Grand Hotel Mumbai, I then went to Dubai. Uh, worked at the World Trade Center, and uh, then uh, during the Gulf War, I lost my job, came to Mumbai, and I joined Cruise. Uh, cruising, I stayed or uh, worked almost 21 years, after which I went uh, into opening hotels in Goa. I did a couple of uh, openings of hotels and then I joined Smash, uh, uh, Smash, which is an entertainment company. I worked there for four and a half, hour, uh, four and a half years. I opened approximately 17 centers in India. Then I did a center in the US, uh, first for Smash. And then I did another seven centers in uh, India. So basically, I've traveled, blessed by hospitality, seen the world free. Yeah, that's, that's quite a lot of experience uh, Paul has. So he's been on cruise, he's been on smash, so you can family entertainment center. He opened uh, quite a lot of, so, a couple of smash in US as well. That's right, uh, Paul, you were there for a couple yeah, of years. Yeah, we did one, one in US and then I did, uh, uh, I did the work, pre-opening work for Saudi. Saudi, okay, okay. So, so that's, that's uh, Paul, thanks for just quick brief introduction of yourself. Um, then we also have, I'm going to mute you, Paul, just allow me to mute you so I can go to our next speaker. Uh, Ms. Sulakshana. Ms. Sulakshana, I am unmuting you so that uh, no. Uh, Sulakshana is again from hospitality and now a trainer, facilitator and doing a lot of work in the hygiene space. Uh, uh, Madam, do you quickly want to give us a brief of what your work is and what you're presently doing and, and how your journey has been so far? Yeah, sure, Rajesh. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me on this forum. <coughs> and this is my privilege to be connected with all of you, each one of you on the call right now. So um, I, have, uh, I have done my MSc with food and nutrition and then uh, I did my BA also long ago. And after that, I wo my first job was with hotel and then I started uh, working as dietitian. I worked as dietitian and then work with hospitals, ICU setups. Uh, my last job was with Nestle India. I uh, served to Maggie brand for nine years. And uh, from that point in time, only like my, uh, uh, you know, I was very much related with the hygiene part. And I did like internal uh, hygiene checks a lot in the uh, industry uh, at that point in time. And two years back, uh, around two and a half years back, I left my job to start my own journey. And uh, uh, like there was a big turn 
uh, it took like why i chose to be a hygienist or like you know uh, to work for in this industry was uh, so once there is a one story i always share so i was sitting with four we four friends were sitting in a restaurant it was a good sized restaurant and having our lunch and one big fat mouse it just crossed the pass My pathway goodness. and i i shouted uh, there was a owner standing there i said anna chuha chuha and anna said chuha it's okay so chala jayega <laughs> and i was so shocked that this is the condition of food, uh, food safety and hygienic food of uh, in my country so this is if this can happen with us it can happen with anyone and really? i chose to be in uh, you know in the area of hygiene uh, and food safety and hygiene and right now i am doing like uh, like trainings uh, a lot of trainings trainings in the area of hygiene food safety and hygiene basically and uh, along with that i am a foster trainer with fsci uh, also i am a uh, i am in uh, hygiene rating auditor which is again one uh, Uh, you know uh, fsci has uh, started this uh, uh, work so every restaurant they can uh, take this uh, audit like hygiene score audit and they can obtain aud- audit scores for themselves which they can put on the entry of their restaurant so this is what uh, this is who i am and thank you so much for inviting me welcome well, thank you madam selakshana for giving us the introduction appreciate you. Uh, you know the, it's a most important allow me to first of all mute you so that we can go to the next yes. one uh, that's uh, that uh, that was excellent um, to have you on board because uh, while we i i just hate to use this word covid and i know it it is too 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 uh, uh, depressing these days so let's uh, we said that let's forward see how we from present situation move forward and from a standstill work uh, start go go into space so we get back to the space which we are i know it's not going to be so quickly and so uh, early but it's a journey and i think uh, most of us are here to understand the journey uh, we have here with us uh, you know uh, chef sudhir uh, chef sudhir uh, allow me to unmute unmute you uh, no chef sudhir has been here for quite some uh, time uh, with hospitality Uh, he worked in cruise liners he worked with oberoi flight services and presently he is with travel <coughs> services uh, managing delhi uh, and uh, airport and many other so up to uh, on to you uh, chef sudhir uh, do you want to give us a quick brief of yeah, your journey sure. so far thank you thank you mr rajesh for inviting me over and thank you everybody uh, mr rajesh uh, as uh, uh, sulakshan ma'am okay first a brief introduction like you said i have about 25 years of experience trained chef professional chef uh, i started with ihm ahmedabad in 95 uh, passing out from there i joined a hotel in bombay leela kepinski worked in cruise lines for some time worked in airline catering for a lot of time about 14 years worked in rest- run my uh, i've run my own restaurants for a couple of years and now i am working at the airports handling restaurants at the airport so a brief of, of uh, my journey in cruise lines and hotels in airline catering in my own thing so that way uh, kind of uh, you know yeah so you bit of experience my share they they that's that's quite a quite a big uh, no almost uh, you've been uh, most of the places so quite offshore airport flights and now with the uh, now with uh, the present journey you are with retail. efs yeah retail. food retail yeah okay okay great thank, thank you. you allow me to mute you chef uh, sure. uh, we have we have with us uh, 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 mr vincent ramos uh, Mr. Vincent Ramos, allow me to welcome you. Uh, he is our star speaker today, and uh, no, he is the area man- area director for uh, IHCL Taj um, Goa, uh, yes, managing sir. almost 14 properties. Uh, welcome you, sir, on uh, on to this platform. Uh, no, we wish to know about your journey before we start. So, up over to you, sir. Uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon, and thank you, Rajesh. So, my name is Vincent Ramos. I am from Goa, and uh, Yes, uh, Rajesh is right. I'm the area director of the IHCL portfolio for Goa. So that means all the ginger hotels 
the Vivanta hotels. We have a new brand called Selection, the Taj sets. Uh, we have an, another new brand called the Ama Bungalows and all the Taj hotels, which we are in Goa. I hate all of them. Uh, to begin my uh, career, I started off as a management trainee with the Leela and then moved on to Four Seasons. And then I went on as a general manager in Kerala to Jodhpur. Uh, my fame I won the best hotel of the world in 2016 for the TripAdvisor, TripAdvisor ratings. Yes, so, yes. I don't think so many of you know uh, because our marketing in India is very poor, but that was a big achievement for India. So that was a palace I ran. Had a ERR of 40,000 rupees. Uh, you have any questions? Uh, my experience goes for 28 years now. And thank you, Rajesh. I'm on. Thank you, Vincent G. Yes, I remember uh, you telling us about this uh, uh, no trip advisor. Vincent uh, is a good friend as well, uh, and we go a long way. So, again, I welcome you on this platform. So, uh, this is this is our panel of uh, you know today's uh, webinar, and we're going to have some question answer session. Obviously, you know so we have uh, few question answers which we are going to put uh, with two questions we are going to put to the speakers now. Post which uh, you know we will open the stage for everybody's. Uh, if you have any question, do raise your hand and we'll uh, you know unmute you so that you can ask the question yourself. So my first question goes to uh, Miss John, Miss John Paul uh, Lobo. Um, uh, while uh, there has been ups and downs, cruise, uh, travel, and tourism industry, uh, what do you think? Uh, no, are the current situation from where the current situation we are, uh, and the near future? What do you see from what where we stand today? What's uh, how uh, is the response they will have, and how will we move from here to uh, the next year? Uh, sorry, unmuting me, Paul. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what I forgot to mention is I am a travel agent as well, uh, a cruise and yes. travel expert. And what yes. I've seen is uh, current situation is we'll get we'll tide over this uh, bad time. Uh, what I see again is Carnival has opened their uh, bookings uh, for August, and we have seen. Oh, a very good response to cruising. When it comes to hotels, uh, as I say, I had two uh, tours uh, scheduled for May. I had to cancel them. Passengers are worried about traveling currently. Uh, the Prime Minister, what he has introduced in terms of uh, local domestic tourism will definitely help travel agents. Uh, yes, uh, It'll take a couple of months. I think so. August is a good bet, although uh, people say that people won't travel uh, because there is no vaccine at the minute. Uh, I can see if you look at the newspapers, we have a lot of people who want to come to Goa currently because we are in the green zone. So yes, uh, travel, tourism, hospitality have taken uh, hard hitting. But we will be back on track. Okay, so so it's just a matter of time. That's what you feel, no? And yes, more uh, more importantly, cruise uh, cruise will take some time to come back. That's what I say because there is a lot of confinement in the cruise, and you are you know uh, in a gated community. Uh, basically, you can't go anywhere besides being on the ship. Do you think uh, they are the most hard hit as of now? Yes, uh, uh, we are in a confined, uh, but we have we have handled situations like this. Uh, um, maybe not Corona, but uh, we have had DNB situations, which we follow USPH protocol, that is United States Port Health protocol, which are respected worldwide. And we have uh, the ability and uh, the training to do it. Yes, uh, we still have. Uh, we can upgrade and learn further. But I think so, yes. Uh, we will have to rewrite some of our SOPs in terms of cleaning, hygiene, and more uh, attention will be based on that. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you, John, for logo. Uh, next question is to Mr. Vincent, Mr. Vincent Ramos. Um, uh, sir, uh, what do you think uh, now, uh, are the next challenges for Taj in the near future? 
Oh yeah, it's uh, Rajesh has been very challenging, not only for Taj but for I think the whole industry. And I think uh, the fact is that uh, there is something called fear that is in everybody's mind. And once this fear goes, I think a lot of things are uh, going to fall in place. You know, so and it will be uh, uh, you know a double boom, I would say, when it, when it comes back. But you know, there's there is no right or wrong strategy at this uh, point of time. Very fact is because we don't know in what situation we are in. So we have a strategy for everything. We have a strategy. If you are in the green zone, then you know what will happen. How we have to do it. If you are in the orange zone, and for all you know, there could be a miracle from God, and you'll find the vaccine, and everything is gone. Uh, you know, back everything to normal. So we don't know. So the, right now, we are planning for every step as a Taj Group of hotel. So. If at all the borders of Goa open, for example, then how do we go about? We have strong SOPs put in place um, uh, right from uh, the check-in, which is a contactless check-in. Uh, this is a, a new normal now. You know, uh, soon after the 9/11, uh, we uh, had all the security measures to go through. So today we are going to have the health measures that everybody has to go through. You know, maybe it's a test on the airport, or maybe it's a test in the lobby. But things will change. Things and we as humans get used to a certain style after some time, and our memory is short. Definitely, business will be back. We don't know when it is, but yes, we are going to adjust to it. We have a strong SOP in place uh, for the time being. Even if now we have to open the hotels, the government uh, allows to open the hotels. How are we going to uh, run the hotels? We like one of the Jinja hotels. I already have quarantine business in Panjim, uh, 70 rooms. it's a contactless service completely uh, you don't even uh, come to the counter to check in but everything is done on the email or on the web even your payment is done to the email and on the web so uh, we have uh, reinvented ourselves to the times and i think uh, we are good to go uh, that's good to know uh, vincent uh, ji that uh, no you, in this challenging times you are Uh, going around and going on and helping people uh, on this quarantine uh, period so ginger has done a step gone a step forward and actually allowed itself to be used as a uh, uh, quarantine which is great uh, news itself uh, thanks for that uh, sharing with us uh, chef chef sudhir arora uh, i have a question for for you what do you think you being as a chef you know what do you think uh, is the you no know, as vincent said there is a fear psychosis when you just have to have the fear uh, Uh, no go and things will fall in place uh, what do you think uh, is journey from here for the food industry so yeah uh, like uh, just now mr vincent said uh, after 911 a lot of security protocols change now uh, hygiene will be contested new normal for us to have a uh, distance social distancing uh, keeping away from people wearing mask and all so that a uh, lot of design changes will happen lot of structural changes will happen we'll have a lot of processes in place again to avoid contact to stay away from people kind of things uh, in the uh, the first thing which comes to my mind is that we have to have our attitude change apart from all design structure protocol changes we have to have a attitude change like sulakshana ji was uh, talking in a few minutes back about that chuha in the restaurant casual approach of the owner ki chala jayega that we do, do not have any more we will have to be very very cautious of how we approach this problem so i am sure uh, once attitude and attitude change we will be able to strive over it survive over this uh, pandemic and we'll come out much stronger yes yes i think uh, no that's what we do because people obviously will uh, not uh, we will have a Will not be stop eating outside. In fact, what Absolutely. they do, they are they are looking at uh, you no know, renowned uh, you no know, uh, trust on the food food place which they are eating. So I think this is where uh, I will ask Miss Lakshana, Miss um, uh, Lakshana, uh, as a hygiene specialist, you no, know, uh, how do you think you can support uh, to gain the confidence back of the guests and travelers? Because today I think this is the most important. Uh, uh no th thing for people to come back to and start eating as they were before what you, yeah. so over to you madam yes yeah, so uh, thank you for the question uh, and uh, you know i call this phase is a rebooting phase rebooting is 
at the world level and and we are also part of that like our industry is also part of that and it is uh, we everyone will have to like this is a shared responsibility i can say so single person cannot uh, work towards hygiene at all this is like until and unless you me everyone we are together and we are standing there we are saying ki no if these norms are not maintained not uh, followed this business will not work so uh, this is where uh, this is what i think and uh, uh, if you look at like at the uh, largely at world level our our country's hygiene norms are anyways under question mark even uh, we all know that and until and unless we accept this fact uh, with grace uh, we do not have any you know new actions we cannot take any new actions so uh, what i see is like we need to treat hygiene and sanitation like uh, it has to be treated as an important component altogether and this is like you know loud and clear until and unless we do that and we showcase ourselves doing that we cannot gain back uh, the trust of uh, the customers now uh, we all know that uh, in india like most of the like the major crowd is young generation this is uh, young number of young people is high and these are the people like 40 years back there was no uh, such thing that we go out every now and then and and eat but now this is part of our lifestyle and if this generation has brought the food industry to to this level uh, this so 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 we it is very important that we we give them that we we impart that trust to them and that will so, be obviously happening with lot of training and lot uh, of no training, training yes. and giving them the confidence i think uh, you no know, government has done a lot of uh, a fssa has the come out with lot of uh, you know guidelines for uh, various industries and uh, do you think these guidelines are self sufficient for people or they need to be taught so uh, there are many trainings which uh, fssa is taking there are, see so this uh, uh, fssa norms are already has to be in place okay when we take the license we know all these norms to be followed uh, but fdos are so far are failing to follow those norms so no matter what uh, we have to uh, take hygiene and sanitation very seriously uh, yes. government is fssci is doing many fostec trainings and there is one fostec training for covid that is also uh, is up and uh, running successfully so each and every food beverage uh, organization has to uh, you know undergo this trainings and majorly their food handlers they have to undergo this training and every fbo has to take this responsibility that is very much important and then there are many points which i was just thinking that uh, you know uh, yes like uh, there has to be uh, one like food safety plan it has to be in place so to this is this is the right time for uh, people to you know we revisit the plan and see that it's actually working rather than just yes. having it on the yes. process as a process exactly and if yes. it's not only a piece of document which is required for your license to be intacted but it is it has to be followed and if if i i say that if you are not a, a able to follow it you take the support from the professionals this is very much required right. very right and, very right very right yeah. that's no uh, that like uh, no that that's the reason we got you here because we know how important it is and no wish to know from you how uh, no industry can use expert opinion and get expert opinion from people uh, just a question to my next question is to mr vincent vincent ramos um, uh sir we expect uh, in the future near future uh, international tourism uh, coming to india probably will reduce and a lot of people will be domestic or national tourists uh, is uh, is this the right direction and if it is the right direction what changes do you want to bring in your strategy uh, taj or for that matter most of the resorts what should they bring into the strategy good part is rajesh is that we as india you know we have a 1.3 billion population uh, 
And last year, 26 million uh, of people went outside the country and 16 million came inside the country. So you understand the maths. Yes. 26 million went outside and 16 million, if my figures are correct, yeah. came inside. If this 26 million are not going to go outside, we don't so, even need, we, are, we don't even yes. need the foreign tourism. Yeah, right? I agree, I agree. And that is what it is, you know, in America, people travel in within their own country. Very tight. Because they, are, they don't have much knowledge of the world. If sometimes you, see, if you ask them where Goa is, they don't know. You know, I agree. They, depend, they depend on, it's called a self-sufficient economy. Yes. The best thing happened after 9-11 was that the uh, industry boomed because the domestic market uh, became a, a prime thing. And everybody did many, a lot, tons of money after that. Everybody thought otherwise after the Twin Tower, now what will happen? But India's economy story was a great success because of the domestic tourism. Trust me today, if, if there's a table of an Indian in the restaurant and the table of a foreigner, the Indian is going to tip you more than the foreigner because the spending power of the Indian is so high. You're sure to get a 500 rupee tip at least, but a foreigner will trip you 100 rupees because the foreign clientele that comes to India also is not of that affluent lot. You know, there are some retired people, you know, or maybe they're selling fruits abroad and then they have that money to come down here. So we don't have to worry. The only thing is that we have to pray to God that this sickness goes away. Okay, of course, you know, uh, we have to do our best in whatever we can uh, this thing. That will be the best thing that will happen to us. But if the sickness will flatten down, the curve will flatten down, and then we need to have a strategy ready. We don't have to worry about the economy because we are self-sufficient. So it is out of question that we should be worried about this. I, I I completely agree with you. In fact, no, what you said, the deficit itself is enough, uh, you know, to be filled by our own national tourism or domestic tourism, which actually go over and above, uh, you know, and spend a lot internationally. Yeah, Sudhir, you wish to, uh, Chef Sudhir, you wish to add something on this? No, no, I was just uh, saying, very well said, Vincent, very well said. Try to clap. Thank you, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, that's uh, that brings to. Uh, in fact, yes, uh, Vincent, you have actually you know removed everybody's uh, you know fear from their mind. I and I completely agree with you. You know, our domestic tourist has the ability to pull back the whole uh, you know industry back into its feet quickly and probably efficiently because the people who visit India probably are the second and third. Uh, no. Um, uh, 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 yeah. What you call, uh, so, you know, what happened, Rajesh, for uh, as a culture uh, in a society, it became a statement, you know, it became a prestigious statement for every individual that I've traveled abroad, right? There is no difference between much between, between Shimla and, uh, and Switzerland. Today, Shimla is more safer today because it's in the green zone. True. I'd rather go to Shimla today yes. than Switzerland. Correct. I get the same effect. I get the same snow. I get whatever the coldness or whatever. In fact, a better culture. And why only the snow? In India, you have lakes, you have rivers, you have cold places, you have uh, beaches. You know, our beaches in Goa are most famous. I, I went abroad to USA and they said, this is a long beach. I said, where's the beach? It's long to me. In fact, <laughs> yeah. we, under, you know, so, uh, we underestimate our beaches, you know, which are so fantastic. The backwaters of Kerala, the rice boats of Kerala, the concept of the rice boat of Kerala, there's so much to to look at the temples, the churches, I mean, it is an ongoing thing. It's only because of this thing that, you know, I have traveled to tell my neighbor that I went to Switzerland. Maybe you like Switzerland or you didn't like Switzerland. That's a different story, but that was a status. But now that you can't go and travel, people will, nobody can stop a travel. You have to travel, you have to travel. You need to travel. But even a migrant is traveling for whatever purpose, but you have, you cannot stop a travel. I completely agree. And yeah. it is going to be an ongoing process. Only thing you have to look into the safety and the hygiene part. And we have SOPs, as I've said. And life should be good, uh, Rajesh, hopefully. I completely agree. Uh, Vincent couldn't agree more because I know coming from you, especially who has uh, you know, traveled and worked abroad. Uh, Vincent has had a privilege to work uh, internationally for Taj as well. So you know, coming from him, you know, obviously says a lot. Uh, thanks, Vincent. Um, uh, next question, uh, John. Uh, I know you have quite a lot of experience. You yourself have said tourism, hospitality, and uh, the cruise, and you know, started from your journey to what you have. You have, I guess, you know, uh, you're the guy who has um, gone over all the places and seen it. So, what do you see in the near future? Uh, you know, um, 
as a uh, as an employment what do you think uh, will be the immediate uh, uh no repercussions and, and as a travel expert uh, what uh, what do you think the future employment trends uh, will be in this uh, uh, in this scenario john you need to unmute yourself i'm trying to unmute you john and yeah that's better thank you okay uh raj what i see is uh, current situations uh, there will be a small players who will find it difficult uh, to pay staff but i think so most of the hospita uh, hospitality industry are in this together including a travel industry uh, we'll get over it uh, uh, the i seen some messages about uh, industrial training etc Uh, students you don't have to get worried because yes it will happen once things open up and uh, these are all learning curves and we should learn and improve from it but i don't see any sort of uh, once uh, we are open to tourism yes we will be back stream rolling and moving forward i um, no i i couldn't agree more with you no i it's just a temporary phase probably you know in couple of months or three months by september i think we should be you know in another uh, situation uh, just that uh, no at this moment of time yes it's a concern but uh, no we will but the time will over uh, time will tide it over that's what i feel uh, thanks john uh, thanks for that uh, chef um, Uh, you have had again a privilege of working with a lot of places you know as a flight airport services and, and again you have been an a hygiene specialist you've been as a you know kitchen uh, almost handling kitchen uh, which have been you know producing almost 20 25000 meals or maybe more than that over a period of time yeah. so many years yeah. Yeah. so so and uh, you no know, uh, i think there is a huge growth uh, so what does for tfs or for that matter what do you think is a new growth uh, which is uh, Uh, which you have seen which is coming to india from your experience so rajesh uh, first few months after the uh, lockdowns are over after we start traveling we don't expect a lot of growth and lot of sales maybe couple of months three months first quarter uh, mid of second quarter very less people will be traveling uh, very few international travels only people who are going to you know need to go will be traveling but once uh, after second quarter probably there is a phenomenon coming up which is now called as revenge travel people who are you know stuck up at home can't go out uh, they are just biding their time and as soon as everything is okay a vaccine is found a cure is found they will start you know going out traveling eating out and that is the time when we are going to move we will have our time that time we just need to sit tight for that time Yeah. like mr vincent also said double boom paul said cruise lines going to you know have a bigger market so similarly i feel that uh, it's time just a matter of time before we actually hit that thing yeah thanks thanks uh, thanks for a long can time. i can i just add to yeah. this sure i just you know sure. i think uh, the um, uh, the gentleman said the right thing and i think it is in three phases you know uh, to be very honest it is survive revive and thrive so right now we have to survive you know as the other gentleman said that you know small business will suffer we have to somehow survive this year you must have heard about uh, jack and everyone who said that you know we need to survive this year then we have to revive ourselves in the second quarter or whatever it is you know and then a stage will come rajesh where we are going to thrive and when we thrive is it's going to be really good because your supply has stopped your supply yes. has stopped you know but your demand will be higher so uh it is going to be a double effect a double whammy or whatever you know it's is going to be it's going to be good but things should work out but yes at the moment we just need to think of how we are going to survive and then we'll revive and then we will thrive that's a good uh, strategy which you have discussed with us survive revive and thrive that's uh, the way forward uh, which i think will be for uh, no hospitality tourism and all industry which brings us to you know the most important question uh, madam selakshana you no know, do you think you uh, know we have enough trainers uh, uh, fast track trainers fsi trainers uh, quietly trained enough who can go into the market or do you think there is a big challenge here uh, what do you feel as an expert Yeah. So, uh, Rajesh, what I see is like uh, there are a good 
pool of uh, trainers with FOSTAC. So FSSAI has been working on this like for last two years to two and a half years time. And we have good amount of trainers with for FOSTAC training. At the same time, even, even like apart from FOSTAC training, what I see is hygiene training or maintaining a hygiene has a lot to do with uh, the behavioral management. So we need to look into a lot of behavioral changes and behavioral uh, trainings for food uh, food uh, handlers. And uh, as Vincent rightly said, for me, this is the time of revival, wherein like we are going uh, out there and we are training these food handlers so that they are ready when we are in the thrive, uh, thriving phase. So that is what I see. And, uh, and still we are uh, working on, uh, you know, generating more and more trainers, creating more and more trainers, and, and, and that will be like ongoing job. Hmm. Very right. Uh, I, uh, so you think there are enough trainers, uh, and uh, more importantly, now probably with, there will be a lot of search in training, and probably yes. you now even, yes. uh, so so that's good to know. I'll uh, uh, go to the Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, Paul, uh, what I would add. like to add is uh, with the current, after the COVID, there will hmm. be more demand for trainers. Yes, I know yes. there are enough trainers, hmm. but there is definitely going to be an increase uh, for trainers because right. uh, all entrepreneurs, uh, most of the uh, private companies or hotels have their own training, uh, uh, post act uh, certified trainers, but definitely from in the private field, I see a definite demand for more trainers. Yes, yes, certainly. So the whole thing, the whole certainly. thing is going to change, you know, uh, there might be now uh, a nurse or a doctor 24 hours in the hotel, you know, more than uh, the, the, yeah. it's going to be redefined. Like we started having DFMDs the, on the entrance and we started yes. getting checked on the airport. The whole thing, you, you, I mean, it's, it's going to be a completely culture uh, thing. Mm. So, Lakshana, just on the lighter side, you know, mm. since you told me about the rat, you know, before I be close, I just want to tell you, I saw a similar rat in one of the restaurants and I told the owner of the restaurant, you know, mm. the rat in your restaurant, he told me, don't worry, uh, sir, this is the So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yes. that, was, uh, that was even a, a shock for me. I said, are you not going to do anything about it? So, both mm. they, that is a blessing. So yes. as a country, you know, our culture yes. has to change. And yes. we, we wait for a COVID, you know, th this is also uh, because of the crisis, a lot is going to change. So yes. let's look at it. Maybe because of this, we waited for this COVID to happen for us to change as a hygiene and sanitation. Trust me, a lot will change with this now. You know, and so yes. And, and to add to this, you know, till now, this even the FOSTEC training, uh, apart from other trainings, even I'm talking about FOSTEC training, this was taken very lightly because it, yes. will, it is a mandate by government. So it because is it's a, a culture. Activity. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it was, a it was always, activity. it was always, a, it was always a culture, you know, exactly. in yeah. sanitation was all, you know, we have a great culture in India called adjust, you know, even adjust. in the train, I'm adjust mm -hmm. don't worry, mm -hmm. you know, if you right. uh, we'll give a seat for somebody, adjust karenge, whether mm -hmm. it, the, you know, so we, as mm -hmm. India, our culture, it will change a lot and hopefully yes. Yes. Uh, better. And, and That's what I look at. So now what I see is when we are, when trainers are putting in their four hours, eight hours or whatever time in training, it will be. Uh, like people will be taking it seriously and they seriously. will be following it. Yes. I agree. I agree. In fact, you know, just to add to what Vincent, you said, you know, now uh, after September 11th and before uh, and uh, after, um, you know, obviously, uh, and the, uh, what has happened, the security, which was a back door has now brought into, has come into front. Mm. So, you no, know, uh, from the back end, it went to front end. So, a lot of uh, people who were there that moment of time in security, who was to think that security is an aspect which is a back of his job, has now got into the front of the house. So, you never know what will happen and new opportunities which will come and, you know, uh, uh, which will bring into this industry. Yes, uh, rightly uh, said, Madam uh, Sulakshana. Uh, just uh, this brings us to our next question, which is there to uh, this is for Mr. John, John Paul Lobo. You, um, uh, no. uh, cruise industry, uh, this is related to the cruise. And no, the question itself is a little uh, no, 
waste because this industry you know 2020 was supposed to be uh, many cruise ships which were supposed to be launched in this year you know this, uh, most of the company in ncca like as you know many five six big ships were supposed to be launched and uh, no uh, iona even you know there were uh, so a lot of these ships which were supposed to be launched and this year itself has itself is a flop year i guess for that's what they will uh, say do you think Uh, calling it a flop year or will be the right thing to say or do you think there is something more into it do you think there is a opportunity here for indians uh, to get uh, you know jobs abroad as well yes sir uh, let me just start when i was employed by pno we just had one office in mumbai where people would line up at ballot pier things have changed now now pno or it is called uh, at csi if i am right uh, they've got a office in kulla which they handle more than 8 companies now they go to each and every city previously they depended on only goans and people from mumbai to fill up the jobs now they are going to cities because there are so many opportunities so yes the opportunities will only grow yeah uh uh i was just looking be, uh, being a part of the cli the cruise liner international association the numbers of berths and the demand has doubled over the last 10 years okay so also uh i get i have a lot of friends in the uh, recruiting industry and they do call me up saying can you recommend somebody yes uh, there are there is a lot there is a big demand for staff for cruise industry and it will only grow and uh, as you said i say it will take a couple of months till we get to this uh, uh, god willing yes and we will have the indians back on board yeah in fact you uh, know i think you know here uh, there will be a lot of opportunity for indians wherein they can uh, uh no get into the shoes which probably uh, no other other nationalites were so far been uh, taken so that's a, a, again an opportunity for uh, most of us uh I, there was olaf uh, somewhere i had seen is olaf still here or we have shankar here. Shank, uh, uh, shankar can i unmute you are you still there yes shankar, i am yeah shankar shankar Sorry, uh, 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 Do you want to put some perspective into this? Uh, Shankar is from New Zealand and you know uh, ex-cruise uh, industry expert. So, do you want to add something more from your end, Shankar? Yeah, sure. Uh, see, it's a great thing what I see what's happening uh, around in uh, India at the moment. Uh, one of the things what we're seeing in New Zealand right now with the COVID whole thing in the hospitality is like one of the biggest sector is the hospitality industry. but the government has taken a lot of measures to overcome it and uh, we are going into what we call as a level 2 as of monday where the restaurants and uh, local uh, businesses are slowly opening up the way i see the whole thing is like if you promote local tourism that will slowly give you a boon into your uh, hospitality industry and the retail industry mm mm-hmm. and that is the way moving forward for most of the countries with all the borders being closed and as uh, some of your speakers who have said uh, like vincent and uh, selection and the uh, chef aurora uh, we, we we have to start looking at the whole thing in a different perspective it is no longer like you know the dollars are going to pay you or it is everybody has to look for yourself first and cater to your local demands and see how you can get your local guys to come into your market you know uh, uh that is the only way moving forward to start with because once you have the local confidence within yourself it is word per mouth you know and uh there's a lot of virtual stuff which is happening at the moment because i was talking to somebody who runs a business in india with regard to doing uh, uh when people come from abroad they give an indian experience this someone who's doing that and what they told me was they've started something virtual now on the same thing where you know you don't pay a Thirty dollar or fifty dollar for for that, but you pay a ten dollar. So even if the borders are closed, you can still hotels like uh, Taj can. They have some great chefs uh, whom they can start up use uh, programs to uh, train students online because we are getting into a virtual world, and that's what we have to I think uh, 
that's a way forward for the time being to keep the economy going and uh, moving forward things will change it will change and uh, the hospital industry has always been the industry where people strive out very well and uh, they will come out and uh, i think it's a it's a learning curve as you all said it it's a learning curve uh, well, like you correctly put it raj uh, 911 has brought the security guys from back of house to front of house and uh, probably you will find more hygiene specialists coming in forward people like uh, so lakshana will be right in the forefront of the uh, hotels in the hospitality industry that's what i see it yeah that's uh, that's what i also feel you know that's going to happen in the near future you uh, know things will change the perspective will change you know uh, with as sister rajesh as long as i don't have to kiss my wife virtually it's fine <laughs> <laughs> that's a good word <laughs> uh, so which it uh, no just uh, uh, one 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 more uh, to, since you have said that uh, no uh, you think there going to be a huge uh, uh, no probably uh, domestic future, domestic tourism will you uh, know there will be a upward curve uh, i also feel the, besides the domestic tourism i think there is a lot of opportunities which will become the india way you know post china uh, been locked down and uh, the uh, the uh, repercussions probably will go the way to india where they will be seen as a destination for a lot of people to be invested that's what many of the people today uh, have been saying in the paper and uh, no this probably being brings and brings in a lot of opportunities to the tier 2 and tier 3 cities of india so uh, no as a hospitality and hotel tourism do you think this is a advantage you can use it to your advantage where you can you know rather staying in uh, popular places tier 1 and tier 2 you, you go move internally taj uh, wants to move internally as well i absolutely agree with what you said rajesh is uh, why you know as i've said that these crises are also a blessing and tier 2 and tier 3 you know india is huge uh, you know, and the tier two and tier three are the ones which has better culture, better foods, better whatever landscaping, better waterfalls. Like we just opened a property in Rishikesh. It's a hit, you know, because uh, wherever you could put it in tier two or tier three, you know, you have to get there. But it's the, I mean, we can command any amount of money. We can come on 30,000 rupees a day or 20,000 rupees a day because Rishikesh being by that uh, river, it's a different experience. We opened our... Uh, property in Kurg, you know, in the coffee plantation, in the rainforest. I mean, it's a different experience which we have never thought of that India could offer. We always looked at those, uh, 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 you know, the, the the common ones, you know, like Goa. Once upon a time, it was only Kalangut and Baga. Then they started uh, discovering Anjuna and Vagator and then, uh, you know, all this Morjim and it went on and on as, you, as time goes by. So there's so much to discover. Even in Goa today, some of the uh, beaches are still not discovered. They are there. They are pr very, very uh, primitive. And that is what everybody wants. You know, finally, when you become rich, what do you do? You buy a farmhouse. Why do you buy a farmhouse? Because you want to come back to nature. You know, you want to go there, have your own uh, river in front of you, and you are ready to pay a price. You know, like we have the Taj Bandargar, the, the animal safaris, the tiger safaris. Yeah. People are ready to pay a premium, you know. Uh, for the for an experience like this to go and see a leopard to go and see the tigers so so there is so much in india and i think that because of this thing you will be forced to do these experiences in the villages and the nook of corners in the tier 2 and tier 3s some of the beautiful temples i think it will work better the only thing you have to worry is the infrastructure but thankfully everybody has a car today people can drive down you know, and experience this, you know, so, so it's going to change. It's going to change because today people are, I would love to drive down then to take a flight today, you know, and I, I don't mind if I'm going to Bombay, I halt in Chiplun, experience that river by Chip, in the Chiplun this thing, and then move on to Bombay and other places. So it's going to happen soon. So experiential, uh, you know, is going to, that's the way forward. That's what you feel. Yeah, I, comes, uh, I probably couldn't agree more with the, this experience. And there are more experiences in this tier two and tier three cities. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Then the commercial ones in the tier one, uh, tier one cities or whatever. Uh, that that brings uh, chefs chefs uh, chefs. Uh, this question goes to you because you uh, obviously you know airports uh, is something which you 
that's a workplace for you where people go for travel that's a workplace for you and i know that you know tfs and like but a lot of people you know think they're moving into various uh, many of the uh, interior uh, cities so what is your plan i know uh, you already have moved into almost 10 to 12 places now yeah yeah about so, 12 to almost 12 so uh, what are then uh, what are your near in the near future you know what do you, what are the plans which you still feel that you no know, uh, can bring in more opportunities uh, for hospitality and tourism here so obviously when uh, newer uh, opportunities come up new people more people travel you know new newer yes, airports um, will be developed we'll have more travelers we'll have a surge in air travel like we had in us earlier in europe earlier india will also see that surge in travel it will become more affordable people will be uh, you know they want to travel faster and they'll reach their destination so they'll be uh, traveling by air and by air by the way traveling by air is the safest mode of travel these days and this is going to give a big boost to tourism local tourism and hotels locally so that's the way to go i guess okay so that so so your your plans tfs uh, or plans okay. to boo interior that means more of opportunities to do you uh, all training and opportunities for people in the hospitality uh, good good so that 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 looks very positive for the future yeah. uh, um uh, Mr. Wilson, uh, no. While we were saying this uh, was an opportunity for everybody, you know, uh, uh, Vincent, one question uh, which uh, no, we wish to ask you, being one of the most uh, respected leaders in the hospitality, uh, in the near future, you know, what do you think uh, will the tourism and hospitality uh, sector um, uh, opportunities which are there? No, there are a lot of students who are a little um, worried about their future. So, what is your, uh, no, uh, uh, what do you suggest they should do this year? Yeah, so uh, the world is made like that, Rajesh. There are crises probably every 10 years, you know, but uh, it has never stopped the human race to get where you want it to get, right? And I am a Catholic, so it, uh, I read the Bible or I've read the Bible. Uh, it is there from our beginning that these crises were always there, you know, and it's always got over and things like that. So it has started years back as humanity race, you know, and crisis will come uh, because it's natural for the crisis to come. But the good part is that uh, that we will move ahead in life. So uh, I think uh, there's nothing to worry. Uh, it's just a matter of time. Uh, uh, you know, so I think we are going to get over it. We should have faith in God. Uh, I think uh, we need to relook at ourselves. Uh, there, there are a couple of things, as uh, Sulakshana said, is a time of reboot. You know, in the reboot, what happens is that why do you, why does your computer hang? Because we've been doing a lot of things that uh, maybe there are corrupted files and things like that, and then it reminds you that uh, you have to reboot yourself. And there's the same thing with us. We have to look at us as coming back to the human nature. As a human also, we have also exploited a lot of things. The, we have exploited nature, we have exploited human, humanity, we have exploited a lot of things. I think it's a time to reboot, to rethink, corrupt, delete all the corrupted files, move ahead in life. Yes, there is definitely a, a positive light ahead. And I think we are all blessed and we'll be blessed by our almighty. And we should just have faith. And there's a, there's a difference between hope and faith. You know, we are not hoping, but we have faith that things will go well. And trust me, it will go well. Well said, uh, Vincent. Yes, I know. You no, know, since uh, uh, no, there is always uh, a silver lining. Every cloud has a silver lining. That's what uh, no, we were saying. So yes, that uh, brings us to uh, Madam. No, Lachana. I think I think it's a natural phenomena for this generation. They have not seen something like this, Rajesh. Mm -hmm. So it's a natural phenomena, but also for the the message for the new generation is just that, you know, uh, they are all stuck to their mobiles and everything else. But there is something that's humanity, there's culture, you know, you, things have changed with this generation, right? So uh, maybe this was a reminder for all of us that we have to go back to our humanity and our culture and our values. And I think we should be good uh, to go. Yes. I'll just like I have digressed a little there, bit. Uh, I have Raj digressed a little bit, but... Sorry, I'd just like to add real one message. more thing to what uh, you said, Mr. Vincent. Yes, Shanky. Yes, Shanky. 
Right. I, I'll just like to say, add one more thing. What it brings is like, Mr. Winston, you are pretty much right on the spot. And uh, one more thing, what has made, just not the younger generation, it's made all of us feel humble and reality Absolutely. of Absolutely. life. We've started realizing what life can be at times and how to overcome it. And we'll come out of this together. Whichever yes. industry you're in, you'll come out of it together. And uh, it's a great, very well put. No, I, I just want to connect the dots here because everybody's talking about COVID and everybody's talking about getting over. No, we have to also relate it to our human nature. We have exploited the mother earth. We have exploited our culture. You have exploited. I'm talking right from my children. I'm talking through my experience. You know, uh, what we did as you, you and me as a generation, you can't expect the same thing. So maybe this is a pinch from God for us to say that, hey, listen, it doesn't work that way. You know, everybody said, I have the money, I can do what I want to do. You might have the best money in the world today, but I'm sorry, you can't do anything because COVID is not going to forgive you for, uh, for anything. You know, it has to come to you. It will come to you. You know, they thought that science was, uh, was the in thing, you know, but sorry, science is not the in thing, right? They're, they're struggling to find medicine, right? And we don't even know if the medicine will be fine if science was so great. So it has reminded a lot of world leaders. It has reminded a lot of this thing. And since this question was on the generation, I think you need sometimes these days till you have bad days, you don't understand the value of good days. I think, and that is important. You need to have some bad days in your life to understand the value of good days. Others, you take the good days for granted. Yeah. Very right, very right. Uh, John, uh, do you want to add something more into it? Um, I think there is huge opportunity for cruise opportunities which is coming and uh, which you said uh, sometime back as well. So what is the extra I don't know, um, uh, development people should do in themselves so that they can be cruise, uh, uh, they can get jobs on cruise? Do you, do you add something? Do you want to add something uh, to this question? Yeah, I always believe in learning and learning never stops. If you think you've, you know it all, that's the end of you. And I can just put myself in this current perspective because I was uh, uh, in, in the UAE during the first Gulf War. We all lost our jobs uh, and we were sent home similar to the current situation. And we were worried what would happen. But 92, yeah. 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 Uh, all we did is upgrade ourselves, took this time to learn new skills, which uh, a lot of there's a lot of online training which is available, which is free. And learning is something that will always assist you to grow. Uh, and I think uh, that's what, if currently we are not doing much, we should, uh, or students who have time on their hands should do this. But yes, uh, once, uh, as I say, uh, currently we have, as I won't mention the companies, but there were a lot of vacancies which were vacant uh, from some major, major companies uh, because I have friends who recruit for these companies and, uh, and they, are, they were interviewing uh, till uh, COVID come in, came in every day. And so there is, there is and there will be an increase in demand for uh, hospitality staff. I agree, I agree. Uh, no, uh, one question which uh, no, always has been playing with me uh, no, uh, on my mind, this is for uh, Selection Madam. Um, the, now, now, since uh, it is forced up to their throat, do you think the small enterprises and the medium, small and medium enterprises, what is your direction to them? What do you feel now the, uh, they should take uh, the immediate steps for their businesses to um, you know, uh, revive from what they are? Can you, from the hygiene perspective, as a you know, specialist, do you think uh, you can give them some direction here? Yes. So, uh, Rajesh, what I have seen in my practice that uh, uh, hygiene, putting in money in hygiene and training uh, is the last priority to any FBU. And we say it is small, but if you look at the ticket size, what a person, uh, uh, like a middle class family will not go to Taj every day. Okay, they will probably True. go once or twice in a year uh, and then they will spend good money. Uh, but they will regularly spend money in these uh, uh, restaurants or FBOs. Okay, and right now, uh, if we read the human psychology uh, well uh, in present scenario, I don't see re rather than restaurants doing well, uh, 
I I can see uh, this takeaway business doing uh, better. And so you will carry cash and carry and take away will be the future. Yes, the yes, yes, yes. Rather than me taking my six people, family of six people to restaurant, and you know there are chances of getting infected. Rather, I place order and get the food in. That's right? an interesting so, perspective. With, yes. Uh, no, Yes, and when we say that now, this uh, kind of units, they have like we are calling them small uh, organizations, but they have like big role to play, big role to shoulder, to uh, you know bring the economy of uh, food business up. That is what I can see. Somebody just asked here that will the change uh, be accepted? But what choice do you have, man? I mean, mm -hmm. if you don't. Uh, don't accept the change i am like compassionately being rude here that then you have no place to uh, do this like food uh, business then uh, so You'll it be is very really, yes, yes yes it is very clear that you have to put in your efforts in maintain the hygiene no matter what so that is my take yeah yeah, and that that uh, Vincent just uh, quickly, you know, a lot of we have seen in Mumbai, you know, a lot of hotels are moving into the five star hotels are moving into, you uh, know, delivery models for uh, yes. food. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that 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 will be the way forward? People, you know, ordering food from you no know, Taj, uh, and uh, no, I see there this is a huge opportunity. Wherein the parties which were I was seeing some, uh, you no know, directions which have come from hospitality expert, which were saying that now the parties will not happen abroad outside; they will happen at homes. Uh, so, do you think you have uh, the FNB business will uh, no, uh, play a major role in getting revenues here? Very, uh, very good question, uh, uh, Rajesh. And I completely agree with what you have said. Uh, see, uh, uh, we are now entered the 2020 decade, okay? And then we were in the uh, the previous decade and in the previous decade. Uh, so every decade has taught us something, you know. Uh, uh, whether it's demand and supply, but just talking to 2020 decade, this decade is going to be the business. You will have, every hotel will have vertical of having the business of ancillary businesses. You know, you're going to make your money through ancillary. You, it's not about food. You might even do laundry. You know, oh, so yes. because uh, uh, this decade is going to see that. So, and we we have started. Uh, 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 these food deliveries as a Taj, yesterday's sale was 14 lakhs for the whole of Taj. 14 lakhs, and this is just a beginning. We were Because we were first forced to do this, because people are not coming to the restaurant, so we said that we'll bring the restaurant to your house. So this COVID thing is going to reinvent itself, and I see a lot of ancillary businesses that are going to take place or take going to take the position, the forefront role, you know, to make money for the hotel industry. And that is what I see, Rajesh. Yeah, yeah, I agree. If in industry, you know, food, uh, food going into the that that's another opportunity, you know, which probably lies for many of the hotels, hotel who are there. Uh, we also have Mr. Olaf Lobo here. You uh, know, he is having weak connection, so I just want to say if uh, Olaf is available, Olaf, uh, Mr. Olaf Lobo again has uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, you know experience in the cruise industry, and here we have had a lot of questions uh, which have come from the for the cruise as well. Uh, there is one question, uh, no, uh, Vincent, uh, I have one for you, you know, just a uh, uh, lot of you, uh, no, a lot of people are going on cruise from Taj and no, do you see, do you, do you see this as a uh, uh, opportunity or a, you know, a training center? How, how do you look at it? I mean, when, how do you respond to your, because I see in the near future, this not happening. So your probably attrition will reduce, uh, but at the same time, uh, no, uh, how, how is uh, your response to this? So it's a matter of time, and then as they say, the water finds its own level types. You know, uh, I think uh, eventually this will all die off, uh, Rajesh, as we spoke about, and then finally it will go back to the old ways. Those who have to yeah. go will, will go to cruise. Will go, yes, yes. You know, there's, you can't hold them back because obviously everybody, as I've, we've discussed, the latest generation wants fast money, fast growth, fast life. It's a different generation altogether, you know. So uh, you, uh, it is going to be just a matter of time. And I think the whole thing will go back to its normal thing of people going on the cruises, people joining the airlines. And I think it's a natural phenomenon. So you can't stop that, you know. Things are not going to change because, oh, you had a COVID. 
the people's memory is short you know people are going to forget this very soon you know and that's what it is uh, so life is going to go back to normal but we don't know when that's the only question and it all depends on god as i say because it can happen tomorrow it can happen after two years it all it can happen after one year we don't know but yes mm. life will go back to its own normal normal so you are you are uh, uh, no what i say, what i think what you are trying to tell to these people is you know just hold on and uh, be where you are you know just stay with the flow we, we don't even know. Know, we don't even have to tell them to hold on now they want to hold on themselves there's no job <laughs> <Okay>. there, <yes. laughs> so a lot of people are <laughs> yes that, so, that's, you know, so, that's they, a, so they, they don't want to go any <laughs> nobody wants to go anywhere you know so again it's a you know right so there are no jobs anywhere else. so everybody is stuck uh, now we have reverse problem we have to feed everyone you know uh, there's no work but we have to feed everyone it's okay that's also mm. part of life but i'm saying that no nothing can uh, you you remember when we were in college the gulf uh, broke i think chef yes. or chef john broke call yes gulf yes broke down uh, there were people did not get job for that one year 92 uh, yes yeah 92 yes. i think us our, our seniors did not get job uh, yes 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 but then uh, after all, everything was back to back to normal after the gulf war and yeah. that was when 911 happened everybody thought finished abhi duniya khatam gulf mm. happened abhi duniya khatam some recession happened abhi duniya khatam no but every time you have come out of it with the with the with the god's blessing and then i think we should just be faithful and i think we should have that faith that things will go and we can do it and we will do it thanks thanks uh, those were some questions which we had for all of the uh, you know panel thanks for your you know time and giving us so we are now opening uh, the floor for any more questions which are going to i see a lot of questions which have come here uh, on the scroll uh, wilson do you want to add, do you want to add something before we go i go on to the uh, the scroll and ask questions uh, you want to fill in till the time mr wilson or yeah. me no uh thank you rajesh no. uh rajesh you want me to speak or vincent to speak on oh no uh, no sorry wilson or vincent yeah, <laughs> yeah sorry <laughs> it's mr wilson lucos uh, i he, spoke i spoke wilson. to mr wilson i think i spoke a lot i think it's your turn now no no <laughs> no 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 <laughs> wilson you have been a positive vibe all throughout it was uh, very nice to have you on board in fact uh, pleasure to... is mine sir uh it's always it's always and uh, at the same time just like just, to... just just Mr Wilson uh, Paul Lobo wants to uh, he, he has a challenge uh, he is in goa and uh, there's a erratic uh, current uh, so we have to say thanks to Mr Paul uh, Thank you. Mr Thank Wilson you. do you want to say uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh well Paul uh, thank you very much for coming on board and uh, we'll be having one more session for cruise liners coming up very soon i just had a word with rajesh the other day so we would ask you to join back for the cruise industry too and uh, keeping uh, fingers crossed i suppose the more uh, more trainers to be required in the post covid situation so we're looking forward to have you on board for fssi training also yeah so, he's a trained trained fssi trainer now right yeah, paul yeah, yeah. so looking forward yes, paul yeah i you can stay still some more time or your battery is uh, given uh, a problem my battery is almost there so i say before i go i'm open to you know anybody contacting me by my email uh, and uh, thank you rajesh and wilson for having me on board it's a pleasure uh, chatting with such a, a very very have, established have, uh, panel okay we have you. almost more than 100 participants paul it was nice to see you paul yeah take care sudhir we'll be in touch yeah, okay yeah we'll see you if i go this if i go online Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Yes. Wilson, Lekostev. Yes. Uh, well, as uh, I was talking earlier, I suppose the uh, the panel which we had, uh, Mr. Vincent Ramos, Mr. Deer Arora, and Mr. Lakshana, and Mr. John uh, Paul Lobo, I suppose we all had a very uh, nice time to hear from you and a lot of learnings. We will carry from here on and. Uh, well looking at the stage i think one thing is very sure that we all are positive and we as humans i think we we always keep on learning relearning and reinventing so i think we keep on whatever we learn we keep on relearn and unlearn and reinvent so this is what we need to uh, do from here on and as very rightly said by vincent uh, 911 which had happened earlier which changed the airline industry so the i suppose post covid 
I think what is going to go forward is the it has changed the hospitality industry. So it is way forward from here. It's going to be very uh, different, and a lot of things has to be adaptable, has to be adopted. And as Mr. Lakshana has already said that we need to have a lot of behavioral changes of training which has to be carried out. And I agree to that. Then it there has to be a two kind of changes, which one is the enforced change and one is the behavioral change. The enforced is one which is enforced on us by the government and the law, and the other one is a behavioral change which we need to inculcate in ourselves to face situations in the coming days. Well, uh, post uh, as Mr. Ramos has already said, the domestic travel will be increasing. And I too agree with that. Uh, your figures are very much right, sir. 26 million of the outbound and 16 million of the inbound. But we hope that at least the 16 million will add up to more uh, 13 million, which has been going to outbound and which will uh, amount to around 28 to 30 million in the coming year, coming days. The Prime Minister very well said the other day on his speech that go local. And I think Indian uh, citizens and the uh, people of India should, I think, should explore the Indian. Uh, tourist places and destinations in order to support this move to go ahead rather than going abroad and i think uh, living mumbai or maharashtra i think delhi few i think few uh, red zones i think most of the other part of the country is safe to travel so i think once the travel is open i suppose people can go forward and venture out uh, revenge tourism as sudhir said the people will <laughs> Yes. People will come out uh, because of the revenge. You know, they were holding on for so many days. They couldn't make out to various destinations, so they could come yeah. out and, you know, there'll be a big travel around happening. And as uh, Vincent rightly said, I think we normally tend to forget things. Just a matter of time. I don't know how much time more. I think uh, we all will forget what has come, and we will walk, and we will, you know, go through this uh, situation coming up. So I don't think this will stop us. This is only a way forward to learn new ways of doing things and as uh, i think as academicians we at our college and our faculty also adopting new ways of uh, you know educating the students of the hospitality so it's a challenge for us and we also in the learning stage and whatever we have learned we have unlearned and we are trying to reinvent also so that's a way forward uh, thank you once again uh, respected and the eminent speakers thank you for coming on board It was thank you so much for inviting. And uh, no, it's always in pleasure. And I would like so like to thank the participants. I suppose we have seen a 98 participants, and I was just thinking we cannot cross 100 because we just have a limitation of 100. Yes, so we we we, we clock 99, and uh, 99. no, I had to drop somebody to you know take some people in. Is it? Is it? Yeah, yeah. So so, so that. So it was a good response, and uh, I hope the participants. There's uh, a, there's one question which is there, uh, Wilson Ji. Can I can I just uh, no? Yeah, please, uh, please, 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 please. Uh, 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 I think we may have answered it. No, this is from Abhishek Pandey, but that's an interesting question. No, as he says, as the information shared by the WHO uh, that the COVID-19 is going to be here. That's what he says, and we all know that it's going to stay here, and then we have to just live by it and you no know, adapt ourselves. And we agree with you. That's what you have said here. Uh, though an hospitality person will be able to give the man's touch to their customers, uh, what is the future? I, and and the fear in the mind. So, uh, no, I think, uh, sir, we have answered the question. It's just a. Uh, I think WHO has yes, taken an anticipatory bail on this. So, so you know, basically, <laughs> you know, because they don't want to be held responsible. So, bola maine tum logo pehla hi bola hai, but uh, it is not nothing to do with WHO or anybody or neither with anyone else. things can change as i've said that you know tomorrow uh, yes you know you you never know you know but uh, there are a lot of things that are a uh, lot of matter on the vaccine with how close we are who is basically just taking an anticipatory bail and trying to play it safe and we know we don't have to talk about what who and the whole thing is we all know the whole story we don't have to come out with it how it, how we came to know about the covid 19 later and things like that so i don't think so we should go by what who and other people are saying i think we should have our own gut feel we should be ready as human beings for anything we have to fight our own battle nobody is going yeah. to us here yeah i agree now shanki you what you have said uh, is very really true Sh shankar uh, shankar raman is uh, again another good friend who is uh, in uh, new zealand he is saying here yeah, promote local is a way forward as a fresh start shanki uh, sh do you want to add something more to it uh, 
and it's it's all about reinventing uh, how we doing things in hospitality you know and uh, hospitality has always done that in the past it is just we will find a new way of promoting it and come out of this uh, that's how it works uh, uh, a lot of times we don't do that but situations like this helps us to come out of the whole thing and uh, go local and that's what i would say because the borders are not going to open for a long long time even abroad so the more harder you go with your local industry that's where you're going to make the money out and as vincent said you will get your 26 million back vincent if you promote it the right way <laughs> very true thank you roman uh, we have another uh, no a hospitality expert who is here he is unmuted uh, he's still uh, having a no uh, trouble that's olaf olaf lobo Uh, again, uh, no, almost twenty-eight, uh, thirty years in the industry. Uh, no, he's been in hotels and restaurants, uh, and uh, no, he was in industry for quite some time. Um, uh, Olaf, uh, is is it okay? Uh, are you able to speak now? He is being having erratic, uh, no, uh, network. So he had asked me, you know, to go go. to see before i ask him to become here so uh, on the stage so i'm just asking as and okay we'll come to olaf later on meanwhile uh, kevel here has put another interesting ch chat which he says here uh, thank you so much uh, for the webinar uh, obviously bvc htms uh, and uh, all the panel who are here uh, the session boosted the confidence and it was really helpful and he was looking forward for more such sessions thank you uh, kevel uh, no we hope Uh, no, the the words that we have boosted the confidence itself is uh, no very uh, good to know for all of us. And that's why we are here. That was the whole way. Uh, no, that was the reason for the webinar, uh, right, Wilson Ji, uh, Mr. Wilson Lucas. Uh, what do you think? You know, uh, Vincent obviously with his experience and obviously his charisma and his uh, you know the way of speaking has uh, put our uh, hospitality industry as uh, mind at ease. Uh, but what do you want to add, uh, Mr. Wilson Lucas? Well, as uh, I think there's nothing more to add. I think Vincent has rightly said that it is more of faith than hope. And I think we should have the faith in ourselves and go forward from here on, having a positive frame of mind and face it the way it comes up. So we just don't fall back and look forward for the new avenues to come in, the new ways to counter it. And I think we can do it. Okay, thank you, Vincent. Uh, no, you uh, want to add something for uh, no before? I think we are almost to the closure of it, and it's good that we are closing on time. I know you are hard pressed for time. We all are hard pressed for time. But thanks for you no know, taking some time off and being here. So you no, know, uh, just before we sign off, you know, uh, you know, uh, you want to add something more, Vincent? Uh, here? Yeah. No. i think uh, thanks to covid we had this zoom conference others would have never had it <laughs> <laughs> probably so my only message is to be positive and look at look at the silver lining in a crisis crisis will always be there you know uh, but i think it's the values the faith uh, the culture that we should not take it away and i know that i'm as i'm saying i'm connecting the dots to something different but i think it's the reflection uh, uh, when you look at it in a we should look at it in a different way and uh, yes things will change we don't as i've said when it can happen tomorrow it can be one year it could be two years it can be three years neither wu or no neither mr trump can tell us nobody can tell us today i think it's the only uh, we should leave everything in the hands of the almighty and things will be, all will be fine thank you so much thanks lovely, thank you it's uh, lovely to be on this program it was my pleasure thank you Thank, thank you, you rajesh thank, thank you mr lucas thank you thank you thank, thank you all you. the participants thank you all right thank you so much thank you sudeep thank you paul bye. thank you bye thank you sulakshma thank you thank you so bye. much bye thank Thanks. you rajesh Thanks. thank you rajesh so we will we'll see rajesh. you again look forward to meet you all in the next uh, the webinar bye for now thank you thank, thank you for now closing thank you so much yeah bye closing it for the day thank you yes, thank you shaiki thanks for joining again shaiki bye we'll catch up soon so see you later thank you sir Thank you, Thank you. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. Thank you.